Today I'm gonna grill an American Wagyu tomahawk steak from Snake River Farms. I'm gonna be doing this as the first cook on a brand new grill. A grill that it costs less than the steak. Stick around, I'll show you the best way to cook this amazing tomahawk. Okay, let's jump right in. This is an American Wagyu tomahawk ribeye from Snake River Farms. A tomahawk steak, sometimes called a tomahawk ribeye or a tomahawk chop, is a bone-in ribeye with this long French bone extending from the steak. But they're also typically cut much thicker than their cowboy steak counterparts. Weighing in at over three pounds and cut over two inches thick, this is a giant strapping monster steak. It's big enough to feed two or three people and it might just be the most impressive piece of meat you've ever put on the table. As you can see, there's really great marbling throughout the steak. So we're going to get a really tender and rich steak if we do this right. Let's get it trimmed up. For a steak like this, there's plenty of intramuscular fat, so we don't need any of the fat around the outside. I'm going to trim most of this edge fat right up to the meat line, trying to get all of the excess without changing the shape of the steak. We want nice round edges so the smoke can flow over it evenly. So I'm not gonna dig into this vein of fat that separates the eye of the ribeye from the cap. Okay, looks like we have a good trim. Let's get some kosher salt on this steak so we can dry brine it overnight. This is a super thick steak, so I'm going to be pretty generous with the amount of salt I use. I'm gonna cover the top, bottom, and the sides. By tomorrow, when I'm ready to cook this, we should have a good penetration of salt all the way to the core. Let's put this in the refrigerator uncovered overnight and let the salt and dry air do its thing. Hey fans, join me in welcoming the newest member of the Grill family, this is BB-8. Special thanks to our Facebook fans and super fans who participate in the naming contest. Uh, special thanks to Travis for coming up with the name BB-8, not eight like the number eight because we eat here on this channel. So this is the opposite of all the other grills. You've seen the massive Yoder smoker named Yoda. You've seen two big green eggs. This is about a hundred dollar grill that I bought from Home Depot. And we're gonna see if we can't make just as good a food on a hundred dollar grill as we do on grills that cost thousands of dollars. So let's see how we do. Wish us luck. Okay, let's get BB-8 fired up. The Weber Master Touch kettle comes with these two charcoal baskets that allow me to easily set up for two zone cooking. I'm gonna start with them together. I've got some Fogo premium hardwood charcoal here and a couple of tumbleweed fire starters. Once I've got some embers going, I'll separate the basket so I have an indirect cooking zone in the middle Put the grate on and set up the temperature probe from my Thermoworks signals to use one of the four channels to monitor the temperature here in the indirect zone so I can keep track of the grill temperature from my phone without opening the lid. Once the grill is stabilized at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll add a chunk of whiskey barrel wood for flavor to each side. While those heat up, Let's head back to the kitchen to get our tomahawk steak ready. Our tomahawk is looking great after a night in the refrigerator. The color's nice and dark, and there's no visible moisture on the surface, which means the salt and dry refrigerator air have done their jobs. They took out any excess moisture, and the salt has been reabsorbed back into the center of the steak. I'm gonna be turning this on the grill with my hands using the bone as a handle. So I'll secure the meat to the bone with a little butcher's twine. One time around the bone, take it around the steak, and then a double knot on the opposite end. That's it. There's no moisture on the surface after dry brining, so we need to use a binder. You can use a high smoke point oil here, but as you probably know from my other steak videos, I like to use Wagyu tallow 
that I make from the fat trimmings from Wagyu steaks and briskets as my binder. It just adds that much more richness to the experience. This time, I'm gonna switch up the flavor profile of my rub. With such a giant hunk of beef, I can get a little more aggressive than I do with smaller steaks. So I'm gonna use a coffee rub. For my homemade rub, I use ground espresso beans, ground black pepper, granulated garlic, cinnamon, paprika, and ancho chili powder. You can buy rubs like this in the grocery store if you don't want to make your own. But make sure you get one that doesn't include additional salt, since we've already salted the steak when we dry brined it last night. Go ahead and be generous with the dry rub here. This is a giant steak. The meat can handle it. Okay, it's time to get this bad boy cooking. I'll meet you at the grill. I'm using a reverse sear today. The best method for getting the temperature perfect and nailing the taste of a seared steak. To reverse sear, you start with smoking the steak. So I'm gonna place our steak right in the middle of the grill between the grill baskets where it's on indirect heat. And I'll place a temperature probe right in the center so I can get the temperature exactly right. I'll plug this probe into the second channel on my signals so I can monitor it along with the grill temperature. After about 40 minutes, the signals is telling me that we're halfway to our target temperature of 115 degrees. So let's flip our steak over to make sure we're getting even smoke coverage on both sides. Honestly, the step might not be necessary but I don't know this Weber grill well enough to trust it with a steak like this. So let's be sure. Forty minutes more, after an hour and twenty minutes on the smoke, the signal says we've reached exactly 115 degrees internal temperature. I'm going to double check it with this thermopen just to be sure. Yeah, we're right there. Let's get this steak wrapped in foil so it can rest in a cooler while we set up the grill for a direct sear. I'll use my tongs to move these two charcoal baskets to the center. And I'll bring in my Barbecue Dragon grill fan to stoke the coals so we can get them nice and hot. I have this cast iron grate I got as part of the Weber grilling system. So I'm going to use that to get some serious grill marks on our serious steak. When the grate gets nice and hot, I'm gonna add some avocado oil, a nice high smoke point oil just to keep the steak from sticking, and about a minute and a half on each side is all we're gonna need to get a perfect sear. Let's do this. Hey, Leah. Hi. Guess what I made? What? I made a tomahawk steak. What's a tomahawk steak? So this is a bone-in ribeye. Like, remember that cowboy ribeye that we made in the Three Secrets video? Yeah. But it is three inches thick, and it weighs over three pounds, which is crazy, over 40 ounces, right? And it's got this giant bone that uh, I'm gonna gnaw on later and maybe if the dogs are good, we'll let them split it. Yeah. 
but probably not. <laughs> so, what do you think? You want to give us a taste? I'm oh, I forgot. Oh. I cooked it on the new grill. We have a new grill? I cooked it on BB-8, the new Weber kettle. So this is a $125 steak cooked on a $109 grill. I guess we're gonna find out whether my skills are good enough to make that grill make this steak awesome, right? Yeah. All right, should I uh, cut us up some pieces? Yeah. All right, so this one's right out of the middle. Looks like it's a good medium rare. Wait, you gotta cut one big enough so they can have it. Oh yeah, all right, I'll cut a piece for you guys too. All right, so I'll cut this piece in half so there's bite-sized pieces. And then I'll cut this piece right here. And uh, do you guys want a big, oh, you want a small piece too? Okay, here you go. All right, this piece is for you guys. Just reach in there and grab it. All right, grab your fork. Take whichever one of those you want. Are you ready? Yeah. Cheers and cheers. <laughs> this is awesome. I feel really bad for you guys that you have to watch us do this. You guys should get one of these from Snake River Farms or your local butcher if you don't want to do a Wagyu one like this one is. And, uh, and definitely use this method. And you can do it on a cheap grill. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know Leah's enjoying herself and I'm enjoying myself. Make sure you check out this video right here where I talk about the best cut of steak, the ribeye cap. And then this one down here, I think you're gonna like a lot too. And we'll see you next week. Get your mouth full. <laughs> on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.